So no matter what happens, I will always love Philip. <laughs> Susan. Uh, yes, Beth? I, I, I didn't hear you come in. Uh, obviously. Honey, what you just heard was the end of a long conversation that I was having with Rick. I, I'm sorry I missed it. Uh, why don't you give Beth a chance to explain? Uh, yeah, you bet. I'm not moving from the spot. When I said... That, that you I, are still going to love your ex-husband? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm listening. I didn't mean that the way that you're taking it, Susan. Oh, great. Well, then explain it to me, Beth. Actually, better yet, wait till my dad comes here, and then you can explain it to all of us. Stop asking me the facts. The facts are that I did not kill Ben Warren. Vanessa Reardon did, so I don't care what you do. Just get me out of here. Or else. Have a good day, damn it, or you're dead. You wake up threatening people, Carmen? You may leave now. I need to speak with Mr. Marlowe. Mrs. Santos, I strongly advise you against talking to the opposition. Thank you. You wanted to see me? Thank you for coming. I'm here out of morbid curiosity. That's it. Now, let's make this fast. I have a hearing that starts in ten minutes. Yes, I'm very well aware of this hearing. I want to make a deal. Talk to the district attorney. If I felt that they could help me, I would have talked to them instead of you. As far as I'm concerned, Carmen, you killed a man. You killed Ben Warren. Now, why would I want to help you? Because I can help Vanessa. After all, it was her shot that killed Ben Warren. Accidentally. Her word only. If you accept my deal, I'll back it up. I'll say I was there and I saw everything. I'm not interested. You haven't heard what I wanted in return. No, but I assume it has something to do with you gaining your freedom. You're such a good lawyer, Ross. Of course, I'm not going to uh, lie to make Vanessa's life easy. After all, she did kill a man I loved very much. Do you think everybody is as corrupt as you are? Oh, yes. I do. Carmen, you're pathetic. And you're on your own. <laughs> so what you think. What are you doing here? We really didn't have to come. What's going on? Yes, we did. Well, what do you mean? Ross just said this was a really informal meeting with the judge. No, he wanted everybody here. Ross wanted everybody here. Why? And we all got you a too? Letter. Yeah, two o'clock, Judge Brenner's chamber. Judge Brenner was not the preceding judge no, of my trial. No, it's to us. You get a letter too? I like it about as much as you do, Danny. Well, it's almost for an informal meeting. Ross, what's up? Believe me, young lady. It's not informal at all. You're all here because a man is dead. And no one is leaving until we got to the bottom of who's responsible for it. All right, everyone, step lively. Take a seat. If you can't find one, I'll help you have strong legs. Your Honor, that would it be me. Counselor, what can I do for you? With all due respect, with all due respect, you just realize how I operate. And you you don't like that a bit, do you? You want to register your disapproval. Am I close? Fine. As presiding judge of the Superior Court, I'm here to clean up this mess of a trial that almost sent this woman to death row by mistake. Your Honor, my client has and been through a terrible ordeal. If you'd let me finish, we might even get through this thing. Now, Counselor, I'm personally sorry for what your client has suffered. But a lot of it was at her own hands, or at the hands of her loved one. And by your proximity, I I figured that's you. Well, you're lucky, young man, that you weren't brought up on charges yourself. Frankly, however, we have a bigger mess here to fix. I have read this transcript twice. And I've never seen one with more lies or equivocations to the point where I've determined it's of little or no use at all. 
Your Honor. Send her in. Put this boat in the water. Your Honor, with all due respect, uh, my wife has already given a testimony to the police, and I don't see why this woman being here today is uh, going to change... What's your name, sir? Uh, I'm Matt Reardon. Mr. Reardon, be sure I read your wife's statement. Now, I understand that she's a beloved and a respected uh, woman of the community, but her simply stating that Miss Warren's, Mr. Warren's uh, death was an accident, well, that's not good enough. Otherwise, all anyone would have to say is, I didn't do it on purpose and we'd all be out of work. And what we're going to do today is we are going to cut through the red tape and let the chips fall where they may. Right. Mom? Are you okay? Yeah, why? Because you were talking about uh, weddings in the hospital. And I just thought that might have stirred up some, you know, memories or something. Oh, you mean because Jen and I got married in the same hospital? Yeah. You know, I remember that wedding. I had a huge crush on you back then. A huge crush on me? A huge crush? Did you have a huge crush on me? Yeah. Back then you had a huge crush on me? Yes. Yes, I did. And that... I didn't want to move in on your relationship with Jenna. It's not that. It's just that it was so romantic. And um, you guys really had something special. I was just always wondering if there was somebody like you out there for me. Well, I won't lie to you. Uh, there's always going to be a place in my heart for Jenna, you know, for the rest of my life. And that's the way it is. No, I, I never expected you to forget about her. But... You are my present and my future. I hope we're thinking along the same lines. Buzz, I didn't mean to bring this up. No, I brought it up. Would you like to know my intentions? No, 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 no. I, I didn't want to push it. No, anything. I'm pushing it. Hmm. I think. Buzz? This is no. the time. Okay. Please. What? <laughs> Give me this one last chance to do something right in my stupid life. Get ready. Will you marry me? Buzz, I love you. But no. Abby? I thought that was you. Hi. Oh, Claire. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. I know this is a little presumptuous, but would you mind if I join you? You know, I don't want to be rude, but I was just leaving. It will only take a minute. Okay. Just that you're one of the very few friendly faces I know in this town, I and I don't. do need a... Um, what can I do for you? I, um... I must be quite the hot topic of conversation with you and Rick these days, aren't I? Well, actually, I, I haven't had much time to talk with him lately. He called me about Michelle, but then he had to go back to work. Oh, I'm very happy for all of you. Oh, it's so nice that Rick and Michelle are so close. I envy that, but I guess I have no one to blame but myself. Um, well, Claire... Well, what is it that you want from me? Actually, Abby, I was hoping that you'd be the one to help me reconcile with my daughter. Let's talk about this in a calm, reasonable... Hey, guys. Hey, Rick. Is everything all right? Um, you must be talking about Lizzie, of course. Yeah, I, I am talking about Lizzie. How, how's she doing? Um, she, you know, she was a little scared, but she's doing okay now. Oh, good, good. It looks like it's a, it's a good day for everybody. Mm -hmm. Honey, have you, have you told Beth yet? Told me what? How wonderful you are. We were just talking about you. Oh, <laughs> well, that's, that's great. What did I do? Uh, um, we were discussing how I thought that you were going to um, tell my dad about the, the beer and Shane coming over, but you didn't. And that was really cool of you. And we were just talking about how wonderful you are. Mm -hmm. And how you're finally starting to be a part of the family. 
understand, of course, how much you love my my dad. And that's why my dad is so happy. Mom, did you ever get my dog down? Oh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go talk to him, okay? Don't want to break up this beautiful thing. <laughs> Lizzie, it's Jim. I'm coming up instead. Thank you. What? For not wanting to hurt my dad? <laughs> that's your department. I think we need to discuss this outside, just the two of us. I'm going to say goodbye to Rick, and I will meet you outside in a minute. Please. Okay. That went well. Thank you for coming over to talk to Lizzie. You're welcome. And I hate to leave you at a moment like this, but I really need to go. Um, I'll walk myself in the back, and good luck with Susan. <laughs> It wouldn't be the first time. I'm not going to deny what you heard. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that it's not true. Oh, well, considering I heard everything you just said, I don't think you have much of a choice. I do love Philip. Oh, uh, okay. But we share a child together, a child who is going through something absolutely terrible. And sometimes during moments of crisis, people get closer. Oh, how close? Susan, it's possible to love people in different ways. Yes, I love Philip, but it is your father that I'm in love with. It's your father that I want to spend the rest of my life with. I don't know if words are enough to convince you of this, but if they're not enough, you need to tell me so we can decide where to go from here. Hello, Silver. Lizzie wanted to join the party. Is everything okay? All right, well, how far back did you want to go? Because I got to tell you, my memory is not that good. Well, well, you paged the wrong guy because I got a hey. mind like a sieve. Hey, doctor. Dr. Bauer, and thanks for coming by. Oh, no problem. No problem. Uh, Harley thought you might be able to lend us your expertise. Sure, what's up? Sit down. Uh, well, Dr. Chase just uh, asked me to put together a list of possible donors. Blood donors? Or, uh, or bone marrow. Bone marrow? What, what's well, going the, on here? The, the point is, uh, is, what we need is um, a family tree of sorts for, for Beth and for Philip, too. Yeah, and you know, Philip's your best friend. You've known Beth forever. So I thought, you know, Rick to the rescue. <laughs> I can help you with that, sure. Great, great. Um, look, what we need is uh, anybody even uh, remotely related, distant cousins, half-brothers, sisters, you, you, whatever. You know, on second thought, this this is not my bag. I mean, you know, half-brother this, half-brother, you know. Yeah, I, I know, I, I, I know, I know, I know. What we could really use is another Lizzie, another child of Beth and Philip. Okay, now, was something else actually going on out there, or am I just being a little paranoid? Yeah? Sure, because... I don't know, I somehow get the feeling that you guys were talking about a little bit more than just dinner. I love you. I just love you so much. Oh, honey, honey I love you too. exactly what happened the night Ben Warren was killed, you should start with me. Your Honor, her testimony's already been stricken from the record. <laughs> Your Honor, I thought we were throwing the transcript out. We're getting to the truth, Counselor. Any objections? Ms. Santos? I was confused because of what happened that night, but I've always told the truth, Your Honor. My statement has never changed. Proceed. Ben Warren was not a nice man. He hurt my family, he hurt everyone that I loved, and I just simply wanted him out of my mother's life and my life for good. So... Go 
ahead. Go ahead. I set Ben Warren up. I made it look like he was coming on to me. I wanted my mother to find us together so that she would break up with him. But she came in, she had a gun, and she shot him. And, Your Honor, I have to live with that every day of my life. And I know that I'm partly to blame for Ben Warren's death. Young lady, you are to blame in many ways. But none of them illegal, as far as I can see. Ben Warren is dead because of what happened after you set these events into motion. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Anton? I just want to say one more thing. Ben Warren was shot twice that night by two different people. But only one person wanted Ben dead. And that person is my mother, Carmen Santos. You were in the apartment after Ms. Reardon showed up? No, Your Honor, that is not what I'm saying at all. Oh, this is wonderful. You know, maybe I didn't make myself clear. I'm not interested in opinions, just the facts. Now, if you didn't see it or you didn't do it, I don't want to hear about it. Am I understood? Yes, Your Honor. Right. Let's go for some facts, shall we? Now, wasn't it your encounter with Ms. Reardon earlier that evening that propelled her to track down Mr. Warren at his apartment? Yes, Your Honor, but she was just trying to protect... But that's just your opinion. The truth is, you don't know why Miss Reardon went to that apartment. You know, your contention that your mother... Your contention that your mother was the only one who went to that apartment with the intent to kill is just an opinion. Your Honor, my, my wife did not commit this crime. Sit down, sir. You'll get your chance. Your Honor, shifting the focus to Vanessa Reardon is going to take us further and further from the truth. Your Honor, I want to make a confession. You want the truth? Start with me. By all means, Ms. Santos. What my daughter is saying is true. I did go to Ben's apartment that night. I was led to believe that things were going on. I was worried that my daughter and Ben were getting close. I, I walked in. I saw them alone together. My daughter half naked. And so I shot him. Yes, I shot Ben Warren. How nice of you to finally come forward with this admission. But as the DA will remind you, Your Honor, it was not the shot that killed Ben Warren. What no one knows is this. I returned later to Ben's apartment. Yes, I went there because I was worried. I was hoping and praying that he was still alive. And when I walked in the room, that's when I saw Vanessa Reardon. Oh. I saw her shoot Ben Warren in cold blood. Your Honor, Your Honor there. I saw her, Your Honor. I saw her murder Ben Warren. Listen, I know that isn't the marriage proposal you always dreamed of. It's not it's that. A, but my heart is in the right place. I know that. It's just that, that I don't want you to think that I was saying any of that because I need anything more from you. you you're you plenty right now. And, and I just want to take things one step at a time. One step? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you steps. You want to put your money where your mouth is. What are you proposing now? Half your stuff is at your place, and half your stuff is at my place. And I was thinking, you know, I mean, if you wanted to ever put a blouse, you know, and a pair of pants together to match, you know, we could uh, have them all in, you know, in one place. You could bring your underwear over, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I do, I do, I do. Listen. Yeah? You have to promise me one thing. What? That, that you'll never change, okay? And you have a full-time roommate, all right? All right. <laughs> You know, I, I really don't think I'm in the position to help you with Michelle. I think that that's between the two of you. Oh, you're absolutely right. No. It's just, well, there's a slight problem. 
Rick being her older brother, he's being very protective. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not... I, I can't go behind his back. No, that's what you mean. no, I would never ask you to do that, Abby. Okay. Never. No, I was just... I was hoping that you just might put a good word in for me with Michelle, that's all. You know, I... I'm not the enemy, Abby. I'm the mother trying to connect with her daughter. I've heard some very interesting things about you. Oh? Yes, your lectures on cochlear implant surgery. Oh, right. Well, really. <laughs> You're a very courageous woman, Abby. Well, thank you, Claire. Um, it, it is very gratifying to be able to help other people and share my experience with them. Well, you do affect people in a very positive way. That's what I want to do with Michelle. I want to... I want to make a difference, even if it's a small one. Listen, I've taken up enough of your time. Oh. You've got things to do. I've got plenty of things to do. Mm -hmm. Now that I've decided to stay, I do need a place a little bit more permanent and less expensive than Towers, so I'm going to start looking. Well, I'll, I'll tell you if I hear anything. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Did really I good. just hear someone say that you were looking for a place to live? Well, yes. Um, Selena, this is Dr. Claire Ramsey. Hi, hello. She's looking for a place to live. Do you know about this? This is amazing. I do, as a matter of fact. Hello. You know the apartment above your garage? Yes. Well, it seems it's going to be free. Buzz has asked me to move in with him, and I said yes. Well. <laughs> We've got a little girl's life at stake here, and uh, I want to make sure we have all the bases covered. I understand that, Doctor, but I have a problem. You don't start a time-consuming project like this unless there's a compelling reason to do so. If there's something going on with Lizzie that, that, that I don't know about, I want to know yeah, about look, it. Look, at this stage in Lizzie's treatment, time is what we have. And look, she comes in once a week for chemo, another time or two for blood samples. And the rest of the time, Rick, this is what I eat. All right, I understand that part. Look, uh, look, look I, I expect... No, no, no. We all expect Lizzie to pull through this with flying colors, but I can afford to make time for any contingency. It's uh, part of the perks of having such a small practice. Pretty much one patient at a time, from what I can see. I'm still trying to see how he works that magic. Uh, that's, uh, that's me. Uh, doctor, I'll help you any way I can, but I gotta be honest with you, I feel out of the loop about Lizzie. So, could you please keep me informed about Lizzie? I would appreciate it. I have a problem. Bye, Rick. Okay. Well, I guess I have my marching orders. You do. And, uh, Harley, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, this is it's very important. It's just one thing. If we're going to work together, I need you to be completely honest with me. Do you know what a tell is? Uh, something to do with cards. It's a poker term. Do you play poker ever? Yeah, you know, now and again. I guess you haven't won very much money at that game. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd know what to tell it. See, it's important for me because in my line of work, it lets me know uh, when somebody's saying one thing and thinking another. Was I, was I scratching my nose? You were tapping your finger. That one right there. The whole time you were talking to Rick. Well, maybe I just like tapping my finger every now and again. Maybe something else is going on here. Yeah. Yeah? I am concerned about Lizzie. Well, I thought so. I, I didn't think you'd ask me to do so much work for nothing. Harley, uh... Lizzie's chemotherapy may not be working. Sounds like they're having a pretty good time out there. Yeah, it does. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so, Beth, what, uh... What is it that you want to tell me? Susan and I weren't just talking about dinner. All right, well, I, I figured that out. I said something that upset her. Okay. When she came in, she heard me talking to Rick. Oh, about Lizzie? No. I was talking about Philip. And she heard me tell Rick that I would always love Philip. What she said is lying, the facts. Your Honor. Everybody pipe down, please. Are you telling me that you're a material witness to a capital offense and you're just now coming forward? 
What choice did I have? If I had confessed to this earlier, said yes, I did shoot Ben Warren, but the real killer is lying in a coma in the hospital. The DA would have had a field day with this, saying that I'm abusing a, a helpless woman to be my alibi. But now that Miss Reardon has recovered, I feel no need to hide the truth anymore. She killed Ben Warren. Your Honor? Yes, Miss Reardon? I think it's time we heard from you. <sighs> the only people who know what happened in that room that night are myself and Ben Warren. We were the only two people there. Now, part of what you've said is, is true. I... After Pilar came to see me in the hospital, I was extremely upset. And when I went to Ben Warren's apartment, I was very angry. I don't know if someone were to ask me whether I had murder in my heart when I went over there, I... I didn't like the man. I... He had hurt my son a great deal. He had had him arrested. He had ruined his career. And Mr. Warren had harmed a great many other people as well. So yes, I guess I did want to hurt him when I went over there. But after I arrived and I, I opened the door and I, I saw that he'd been shot, all that I was thinking was that I wanted to get him some help. But you did pick up that gun. Yes, I did. But that was before I had even seen Ben Warren. You see, Ben was lying on the floor, but he was out of my line of sight. And I had just picked up the gun because I was... And then all of a sudden, uh, Mr. Warren loomed up and he grabbed me and he was desperate and he was yelling at me and he was asking me to get some help and that's when we started struggling. I mean, he, he was holding on to me and at, the gun went off and that was the shot that killed him, but it was an accident. You realize that the DA doesn't buy your story. She thinks it's too convenient. And I must admit, I must agree with her. Uh, Your Honor, may I? Yes, Mr. Marler, you've earned it. Uh, Vanessa Reardon, through her own testimony, has today acquitted herself, and I can prove that. I'll never say no to evidence. The floor is yours. This is the forensics report. You have a copy of it, Your Honor? District Attorney Wolf has a copy. Mm -hmm. I have one, the only three in existence. Now, this report states that two shots were fired, one from point-blank range. Your Honor, Ross, I know where you're going with this, and Your Honor, it has nothing to do with intent. No, no, wait a minute. Intent has everything to do with it because the district attorney has portrayed the killer as someone who shot, paused, got closer to the victim, and then at close range, fired the second shot. We're way past that, Mr. Marlow. We've already determined that there were two shooters. Yes, I understand that, but the point, Your Honor, is if Vanessa Reardon's intention was to murder Ben Warren, she simply would have shot him, and the angle of that shot would have come from above or straight ahead. Mm. It didn't. This report says it didn't. The angle of the shot that was fired, it came from the side and at a slightly upward angle. Now, the gunpowder residue on the wound clearly indicates that the muzzle of the gun was moving when the shot was fired because they were struggling to gain possession of the weapon. Vanessa Reardon has acquitted herself today because she's never seen this report. And with her ill health for the past few months, she's heard nothing about it. In fact, until today, she didn't even know that this existed. Now, if you take her testimony 
and compare it to the facts in this report, she has clearly acquitted herself. She's innocent of any crime. Your Honor, all the facts we need, all the evidence we need, it's in that report. Ms. Reardon, have you seen or heard of this report before? No. No, I haven't. No, I don't believe you have. Ms. Wolf, tomorrow morning I'll expect on my desk a motion ruling that Ben Warren's death was an accident. Don't thank me. Thank Mr. Marley. And young lady, you're free to go too. But uh, Miss Santos, I haven't forgotten about you. Now I'll be looking forward to a motion on my desk tomorrow morning that will charge Carmen Santos with perjury, bribery, fraud, and attempted murder, and anything else they can throw in there. You can't do this. Your Honor, I saw her. I saw her murder Ben Warren. You cannot do this. Bailiff, demand this woman to custody. Ladies and gentlemen, this case is now closed. Thank you. Thank you. Good work. Oh. I used to live in that apartment. No. I was just thinking about it the other day. Yep. Well, then, see? It's a done deal. It was meant to be, right? Uh, that's very kind of you, really. It's it, very nice, but I think I should look around a little bit. Right. Claire, are you crazy? <laughs> the price is right. And look at the landlords. I mean, who could find nicer landlords than this? Rick you and know, Abby? Come on. Well, even if I were to <laughs> say yes, I mean, it just wouldn't be fair to Abby to put her on the spot like this. You might have someone else in mind. Oh, thank you, Claire. Thank you. I, I meant what I said before about not wanting to be a burden on anybody. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll look around. I'm, we'll have plenty of time to get to know each other, Michelle and I. <laughs> um, you know what, Claire? I want you to take the apartment. I think you should. Really? I, Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely, yes, I am sure. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Abby, oh. thank you. Of course, I'm going to go cancel that appointment with the rental agency. <laughs> this is great. Oh, this is wonderful, thank you. Yay. <laughs> Ooh, whoops. It looks like I stuck you with something, doesn't No, it? no, really, it's fine. I, I just have to, I, I just have to tell Rick. Well, look at the bright side. You're not going to have to wait another month for the rent. Exactly. Right? I have to go call the movers. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you later, sweetie. Okay. <laughs> now I just have to figure out how to explain to Rick that Michelle's mother is living in with us. This isn't over yet. Tell the judge, lady. Oh, we have. more than anyone could possibly love you in your life. You know what's fitting is that you're not going to prison for murder. But because you tried to destroy Michelle, my marriage, and me, 
You're going to prison because you are a lousy mother, Carmen. Don't call me Carmen. I'm your mother. Goodbye, Carmen. So long. No, Daddy, don't go. I did it for you. I did it for all of you. For your sister. It's not like it sounds. Philip and I have Lizzie, so we will. So you, you know what? You, you, you don't have to say anymore, Beth. Yes, I do. No, actually, I, I... in all honesty, you don't. I mean, granted, if you if you laid this on me a few months ago, I probably would have been very angry and tried to take it out on Philip. But right now, I have the greatest reason in the world not to feel insecure. It, it's like whatever you and Philip had in the past, it doesn't matter because he'll never take this life away from us. No, he can't. No, he can't. And you know, I, I understand that Philip is always going to be in your life, just like Connie is always going to have a special place in my heart. But we're together now. And our bond, this, our baby, it's going to define us, Beth, who we are and how we feel about each other. I got to tell you, you make me feel like a 20-year-old. I feel like I'm walking on air and then I have the whole world ahead of me. And I cannot wait to take this journey with you. This is, uh, does everybody have a glass? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Okay, this is one of those rare days when the good guys actually win. So, just to Michelle and to Vanessa and to everybody who believes in the power of simply telling the truth. No, no, here's to you. I mean, you took on Carmen yeah. Santos All and right. you took yes, on the DA and you saved my life and Michelle. So, here's to Ross. Ross, Ross. Ross. here's to 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 Ross. Great tonight, you had a chance. I yeah. have a pregnancy test in my purse over there, and I haven't taken it yet. Well, come on. I mean, this is as good a place as any, it's, don't you think? I'm just not thinking straight yet. I just... Okay. What's going on right. with you? Did you go see Carmen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Mom? Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just... I'm fine. I got a couple things off my chest. I'm fine. Honey, yeah, this is really hard for you. I'm sorry. It's okay. Really. She's not the same woman that I remember. She's not the same woman who raised me. She's not the mother that I loved. I loved her once. Well, but... maybe you should be telling her this. No. No, not tonight. Tonight is for us. Carmen can wait. She's not going anywhere. Guiding Light.